I'm Maddie. Um, I'm the managing editor of Canter this year, which is the University of Canterbury's student media source. My job is basically to overlook a team of about 11 people, which kind of includes video, radio, design, social media, and our fortnightly publication as well. Here we have a June edition of the 1951 Canter. Obviously 1950 was a huge time, it's when apartheid was kind of born and we see articles in here talking about that and pretty opinionated articles as well. There's no Māori representation in here whatsoever um, and we have a dedicated issue to Māori and Pacifica representation every year. Like there's quite a lot of speak about you know Christianity um, very strongly as well and not really any other religions which is quite interesting because that's not something we'd probably do now but obviously back then it was very a bit more conservative. Looking back at this I can see obviously there were so many things you couldn't talk about and you can't talk about and then kind of bringing it forward to things that we're talking about now like we're talking about Cyclone Gabriel, gender affirmation surgeries, Jacinda Ardern resigning, like all of that sort of stuff. Something else that I found really interesting is the layout plan for the island campus. One of the interesting things I thought about this article was that the architect was insisting on one-storey buildings for the whole of the university as he thought it would look nicer, whereas now we see basically all of our buildings are multiple storeys. But there's also some things in there that we maybe don't see, like the sports oval. I saw there was a pool, which would have been pretty cool. A majority of these articles are written by students, and that's always the hope because it's a student magazine, but at the same time, there's lots of censorship within it. And I think a lot of that can be played down to it being not editorially independent at that time. We only became editorially independent three years ago in 2020, but definitely lends a bit of an appreciation to the freedom that we have today. I think when we take into account what we're doing now, we just try to put as much student voice in there as possible. And advertisements aren't really our driver, at least we don't want it to be. Um, whereas obviously back then, a lot of this stuff was probably funded a large amount by advertisements, which is why you see so many in here. It's lots of words. I think that if you presented something like this, it's a generalisation, but if you presented something like this to students today, they'd probably flick past it. I don't really know what's changed. I think probably the introduction of social media and TV and all that sort of stuff has kind of driven students a lot more to visuals. Whole cover page now, um, and probably for the past wee while has been a dedicated art. We found that's kind of enticed students in as well. It's happening across magazines all over New Zealand. Canter kind of gives that opportunity for growth. As a young person, it's quite hard to get things published in big organisations. As soon as someone hears the word student journalist, um, no one wants to talk to you, but as soon as you say that you work for a publication, put a name in front of it, um, people are a lot more likely to speak. It's definitely developed my uh, skills. It's a pretty cool opportunity.